So my purpose on the front side of this group assignment was to get you to kind of start with some concrete examples to get a feel for the definitions of these various things, but then secondly, to move from the concrete to the abstract. Right? So now we're supposed to deal with a set E of real numbers that we don't know anything about. Right? We don't know whether it's an open interval. We don't know whether it's a closed interval. We don't know whether it's an interval at all. We don't know whether it only contains rational numbers, or maybe it has some irrational numbers. Maybe it's just algebraic. Maybe it's just transcendental. We don't know. It could be nasty. It could be something completely unknowable. Right? Um, but the point is that as far as our proof is concerned, we don't care what kind of numbers are in E. We just care that it's a set that lives within the real numbers. We also care that E is not empty, and we care that E is bounded from above. So first of all, let's take those two pieces apart real quickly. Um, what does it mean that E is not empty? It has an element, right. So there exists an element, what should we call it, X, um, such that X is an E. So that's the first thing that we know. Secondly, what does it mean for the set E to be bounded above? Great. So to say that it's bounded from above means that there exists a real number, I'm going to call it B, which is an upper bound for the set. In other words, Danielle, as you said, that means that every element in the set is less than or equal to B, i.e., for all X in E, x is less than or equal to b. Okay. This is not true of all sets, all subsets of the reals, right? If I had a subset of the reals that extends all the way up to positive infinity, right, then there would be no such real number. So to say that our set is bounded from above means that there's some finite real number less than or equal to which all the elements of our set are. OK, great. I'm going to add to this a diagram. I'm a big diagram person. It's just, I find for me at least, <laughs> diagrams tend to help enhance understanding and meaning, um, as long as the diagram is, is well enough chosen. So um, if I sketch my set, maybe one way of thinking about my set would just be to kind of imagine it as being this cloud of points in, in the real numbers. So this is my set E. Again, I don't know whether the elements of E are rational, irrational, transcendental, algebraic, computable, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? It's just some subset of real numbers. And we happen to know that it's bounded from above, so there's some number B, which is an upper bound. Okay, cool. So the point of this proof is to consider a subset of E. Okay. Call it F. And as Cassandra told us, F being a subset of E means, again, logically, that for all X in my set F, we know that X belongs to E. Right? That's what it means for F to be a subset of E. Um, so somewhere down here, there are some points. And again, we don't know how nasty the set F may or may not be. We only know that all the elements of F also happen to belong to E. And then what we're trying to show, so this should be our ultimate goal here, we should be trying to arrive at the statement that we have in this box. We're trying to show that the supremum of f is less than or equal to the supremum of e. And so our proof, whatsoever else we do to get there, has to end in the statement, therefore, the supremum of f is less than or equal to the supremum of E. So that's where we want to end. And we have a lot of information on the table that can kind of give us a clue as to where to begin. If we use an element argument. We might pick an element of F. OK. And then what do, you, what do we want to do with that element? So if X belongs to F. And then since F is a subset of E, X is also a okay. Thus, x belongs to E. OK, I agree with that because f is a subset of E. So that's just a consequence of that statement right there. Before we even get further down the line, how do we even know that E has a supremum? 
Why does supremum of E even exist? Because it's bounded from above, right? Um, we haven't actually done a proof, though, in our class to show that every set which is bounded from above has a supremum. In fact, though, that's one of the axiomatic properties of the real numbers. What's it called? Uh, completeness. Yes, supremum of E exists because of the completeness axiom which is probably the most important axiom of the real numbers because it's, it's what differentiates the real numbers from the rationals. Completeness is the statement that every non-empty bounded above subset of the real numbers has a supremum, right? That is a real number. So supremum of E exists because of the completeness axiom of the real numbers. And so if we want to refer to the supremum of E in our proof, we can do so, right? Uh, maybe we should even give it a name. What should we call the supremum of E? It doesn't really matter. Uh, M? So because of the completeness axiom, we can confidently refer to the supremum of E in our proof. Um, OK. So we know the supremum of E exists because of completeness. Um, how do we know that the supremum of F exists? OK. So because F is contained in E, finish that thought here, why does that tell us that the supremum of F exists? For all X and F, what do we want to assert here? We need to know, first of all, um, that F is non-empty. I should have mentioned that here, I suppose. Yeah, I should have wrote that in the, in the statement here. So we're going to assume that F is not empty. What else do we need to know about F in order to guarantee that its supremum exists? It's less than or equal to. In fact, we don't even need to really know that it's less than or equal to M, even though it is. Um, it would suffice for us to know it's less than or equal to B, right? Our, our upper bound here for the set. Because the point is, we need to show that F is bounded from above. Why is F bounded from above? Because it's a subset of E, and E is bounded from above, right? And so to, just to complete that thought, for all x and f, x is less than or equal to b because for all x and f, x belongs to e. And because for every element in e, x is less than or equal to b, that means every element in f is less than or equal to b. Right? And therefore, again by the completeness axiom, supremum of f exists. So whatever the supremum of f is, let's call it, uh, let's call it lowercase m. We know now that both e and f have suprema that are real numbers. So the only question is, how do we know that the latter is less than or equal to the former? How are we going to show that the supremum of f is less than or equal to the supremum of e? So let's think about the contradiction proof so that we can avoid having to split the less than or equal to here into, into uh, separate cases. So if we're setting ourselves up for a proof by contradiction, we would write here, assume by way of contradiction that the supremum of f is greater than the supremum of e. And now the, the, the task is, knowing everything that we know on the screen here, we know that the supremum of f exists, we know that the supremum of e exists, and we're going to assume by contradiction that the former is greater than the latter. So we have to figure out what fact we can all agree on is contradicted by the assumption that the supremum of f is greater than the supremum of e. We won't be able to finish this logic in class today because we're about to end, but can somebody tell me what you think the contradiction is going to look like here? If the supremum of f is greater than the supremum of e, remember supremum is the least upper bound. Okay. So maybe one way of doing this would be to show that if the supremum of f is greater than the supremum of e, then maybe that means that there exists an element of f, 
which is greater than every element of E. And you can think about why that would be a contradiction. Yeah, Sophia? We end up in a place where we're contradicting that F is a subset of E. Right? And that was something we assumed in the beginning of our proof. So if we contradict that, then we can't sustain our assumption by way of contradiction. <laughs>